Today's story is about door handles. Every day of the year, I'm sure, like me, you will open a door and not even think about where the handle is manufactured. Well, I'm at Instinct Hardware in Birmingham here in this 65,000 square foot facility. They make tens of thousands of these types of door handles every year, and we're gonna find out exactly how they go about their manufacturing process. Neil, this is a very interesting story here. I've got to congratulate you on, on the success of this business, certainly moving into a new place like this. You must have some, some pretty big ambitions for this company. Yeah, certainly. I think um, over the last few years, we've invested quite heavily in, in CNC machinery. Um, like I say, we've got a, 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 a large building here now, which we're looking to expand into over the next few years. A massive part of your process here, obviously you, you do import some product, but the majority of your components are manufactured here. On that, on that manufacturing and make inside, these lead well machines, tell us a little bit about the story behind all the, all the journey of, of, of having this equipment here. Yeah, so um, we moved into this larger premises probably um, about 10 years ago now, um, with the view to kind of move into um, and use CNC machinery and start bringing um, production processes in-house. Um, so we started off with a couple of um, Leadwell CNC machines, one lathe and one, manuf um, one machining centre. And every sort of six months to, to every six to 12 months, we've made additions um, to our machinery and um, yes, yeah, only slowly grown to eight machines. It's a pretty frequent buying habit pattern, cycle, whatever you want to call it. And most recently, we got behind us here the Leadwell V32 IF machining center. I want you just to show us these parts here, because this is yeah. the type of product that you're making, isn't it, right. on these machines? Correct, yeah, that's right. So this is um, um, a bespoke lever handle design, uh, which a, comp uh, a customer will have um, came to us with an inquiry, um, a specific design and shape requirement. Um, we will then uh, create the design in, in CAD, um, and then put it through onto a machining centre like the one that you see here to machine and, and, cr and create the part. What, what I've, I also find interesting coming here today is that a lot of companies are, when they buy machines, they're, they're chasing seconds. They're really looking at reducing cycle times to, 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 to minimal amounts in order to get production through. You're more interested in the process of being able to complete a part in one hit and get it through your factory, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Um, Reliably. That's right, yeah. So individual component speed isn't a major factor for us. I would say the major factor for us in, in utilising machines such as these is a wide variety of processes effectively um, and the flexibility that they give us. And to date you, you, you've opted for three axis solutions here. Have you ever thought about going beyond that or is a lot of the work you do very simple? Let's have a quick look at this second yeah, part here. This part here, yeah. No, we have... Um, Obviously, initially we've invested in the three axis, but we have certainly got a view um, to purchase or at least make additions to these machines um, with a fourth axis. Because some of these parts are very simple, aren't they? But but the materials on them, your, your machine is stainless steels? Yes, that's right, yeah. Three ones, predominantly 316 stainless steels. Um, so yeah, we need, we need the, uh, the, the machinery to be able to obviously machine materials such as these. And this particular part here is something as simple as just uh, drilling a hole and, 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 and creating a threads. Yes, that's right, yeah. So with this particular component, um, before the CNC machinery, this would probably be a 10 process component going onto various machines. Whereas now we can utilize a machine and almost get this off in one go. Let's go on to, you, you, these aren't just the only two machining centers. I know you've got another two or three, haven't you? That's right, yes, yes. But beyond that, there's turning and there's not just straight turning, there's multi-axis turn. I'm interested to have a look at your multi-axis yes, machine. Let's go. Yeah. Now, t turning, Neil, you, you've got quite a few turning machines from Lead Precision Machine Tools. The one that's really caught my eye here that I want to talk about first is this T7, which is a multi-axis machine. What sort of led you from, from simplistic turning centres up to this rather more sophisticated piece of kit? Um, yeah, basically we purchased uh, this machine um, born of the need to um, do secondary machining operations and eliminate secondary setups on other machines. And we've got some interesting components here that, that kind of demonstrate that really. And one that stands out to me here to start with is something like this. You're starting to introduce engraving into the process. So is this something before you would have had to have 
sent out for sub, to a subcontractor, for example? Yeah, that's right. So um, a job, a job of uh, jo a job like this, we would have um, put out and subcontracted out, but now we've brought them back in, and we're able to um, engrave on various different profiles, round bar, round flat bar, using machines like this. And important to stress, this is like a handle for a door, isn't it? Hence that's the right. reason it says pull. Exactly, yeah, that's right. It's, it's a, a component that will be welded onto a section of a pull handle and um, yeah, we'll be put on a, on a Do you do them with push as well? We do, yeah. yes. Uh, su su surprisingly, yeah, they'll, they'll purchase um, a set of handles, even though it's called a pull handle, sometimes we'll have to engrave push on them as well, yeah. What about this, Neil? Tell us about this. So this is a, um, a door handle knob um, where a customer required a specific profile and shape. Um, so we will then machine it on, on, a, on a machine like this where the, mach the machine will create the full profile, all the holes and drifts and grooves, etc., and come out with a finished and final product. You do polish that, don't you? Because we'll, we'll right. see one of those complete as That's well. Right. Then uh, moving on, what does strike me is that a lot of these components are very simple, but again, as we've said already, it's about you getting them through the machine shop very efficiently, isn't it, rather than, than having to use a lot of machines for simple parts. Yeah, that's, re that, that's right. Um, one, of the, one of the main plus points of having machines like this is the flexibility, um, to be able to create a wide, wide range of parts as opposed to machining them quickly. Um, so a component like this where a customer have required a particular fluted design, we're able to machine this sort of design on a machine like this, as well as doing things like the graving, engraving and, and creating the, the door handle knobs. How did you find adapting to having two spindles on a machine rather than just one? Um, it was a fairly easy transition. Obviously the guys from Leadwell, they were able to uh, instruct us and give us um, training um, on how to do it. So yeah, it was a fairly, fairly simple move. Again, what I like here, Neil, is the story in some senses is about how this supplier of equipment has sort of helped you from the, mo the most simple of machining operations right the way through the, to the complex task. So you've never had to go outside of lead precision machine tools, have you, to solve a problem? No, that's right. No, um, the guys at Leadwell uh, are a phone call or an email away and uh, they're fairly quick in, in kind of giving us the, the information and knowledge we need to be able to create the parts that we need to create. So Neil, is there a lot of variances in the types of parts that you make, the types of handles that you make? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think um, one of the biggest factors is now creating bespoke and custom products. So we do all sorts, a whole plethora of uh, different sizes, designs um, and finishes. What would be the biggest um, length -wise? Well, the biggest handle. Uh, we go anywhere up to about four metres and about we have done 70 mil diameter as well so it's got to be some door yeah it certainly does yeah <laughs> yeah now one one of the reasons for the move into this this huge place that you got here and the investment in the Lebwell machines is because you are starting to get demands from customers to respond very quickly That's and right. you need to be able to keep complete control has that been a been a big big transition in your company yeah it has yeah um, so obviously moving into um, a place of this size we've tried to bring as many processes in-house as possible um, right through from like you mentioned the CNC's through to the polishing as well um, so yeah we're trying to bring all of that back create control and obviously give us give our customers a quicker turnaround and with the, with the specifically with the Lebwell machines that we've come to look at here today I think as I've mentioned already maybe on one or two occasions that it does show that the, the diverse range of the machine tools that they offer doesn't it the fact that you can go to them for a solution from a very simple job up to up to a complex task yeah that's right um, so we will have inquiries come in for with part drawings or components um, in sample form um, and we'll approach Leadwell, um, show them these drawings or components and they're able to give us a solution um, in terms of machine and also um, right through to the process of manufacturing. Door handles, big business, what are you turning over? Uh, we're, at the moment, the last year we turned over just over 4 million. And growing? I hope so, yes. <laughs>